Four ninjas roll in, one ninja roll out. Four ninjas roll in, one ninja roll out. Drop the links and grab some drinks, yo. We got Mad Quattro and Hot Dance Moves because we just watched FP2 Beats of Rage and it's time for a beat off on B Movie Mania, yo. Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. This is B-Movie Mania, dog. where sometimes shit's tough, but we're going to help your ass through it together. I'm J to the A, son, and with me, representing the 630, is the banana boy, Crazy Sea Hut. I had nothing planned for this, yo. I don't know what I'm supposed to say right now, dog. <laughs> All right, over here next to this part of my ass in the 312 is M. Hey. <laughs> What's up, most sucking bitch? <laughs> <laughs> and way out by the sea of wet shit in the 323 is my main mystical hype man P bro. 187, yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beat beaters. Beat beat. Is FP2 one of the best dance movies of all time? Wow. Putting it out there right off the bat. I'm asking the question. It's a oh. question. Oh, I second, second best dance movie of all time. You like uh Dirty Dancing? Step Up's pretty good. Step Up. <laughs> uh, I, I thought the original FP was pretty good. Yeah, it was. It was good. So I guess we're going to compare the two at this point. We watched FP2 Beats of Rage, uh, written and directed again by J. Tro himself, Jason Trost. Uh, does anybody want to hit me with the synopsis, dog? <laughs> I mean, it's been a whole bunch of 365s and, uh, <laughs> you know, the FP, Fraser Park, is like out of booze. It's almost gone now. There, are, It's on, you know, rations for the booze, the Quantro, yeah. if you will. And so, uh, you well, the know. the booze mines have dried up. Yeah, it's the, the mines, it's just going nowhere, uh, you know. And then <laughs> shit goes down in the FP, so J-Tro and... Uh, <laughs> KCDC got to go out to the wastes <laughs> and and do some uh, beat beating to get more booze for the FP. Yeah, so J Tro goes out to the wasteland to compete in the Beats of Rage underground tournament and face the villain AK47 and hopefully save the world. I don't want to let these beats get stank, y'all. So let's QT. <laughs> Quick takes. P bro, keep it cheap and cheerful. I can do that. Well, you know what? The first thing you see in this movie is like a warning that says three drink minimum required to enjoy this movie. <laughs> so, you know what, guys? Hold on. There it is. Paul just poured three I shots. I think three drink minimum to enjoy this podcast as well. Cheers. One quick takedown, shit lords. Shit, shit lords. Yes. Shit Thank loads, you. more to go, yo. Um, Sea Hut. Right, you want a QT, yo? You want a QT, dog? I'll get you one up better, does. What? I'm terrible with the slang in this movie, <laughs> but I do have one thing better than a quick take for you, Jay. Okay. It's something I like to call Wayland Facts. Oh, we're doing a, a oh, bit already for your Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm getting right, in here like early. I'll, early I'll, and often. I'll let this happen, dog. All right. So, Sean Whalen, who played Stacy's dad in the first FP movie and has a cameo in the FP2, Beats of Rage, was also in the very first Got Milk commercial in 1993. Wow. Now, this commercial was not only directed by Michael Bay, but it also inspired Lynn Manuel Miranda to create a hit musical about Alexander about an Alexander Hamilton fanatic that ate a peanut butter sandwich at the wrong moment. Of course, Miranda couldn't find funding for that sort of thing, so he was convinced to write a musical about Alexander Hamilton himself instead. Wayland facts. Huh. So what you're trying to say is that Sean is connected to all of this. Yes. Yes, he is. Interesting. Um, well, I don't know where Mike went. 
Yeah, where are you, Mike? Hey, what up, my ninjas? <laughs> oh, 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 shit. Wow, he's even got a costume. What up? Well, I'm here with my four loco right here, bitch. I'm going to drink it up. Oh. I love this. I wish our listeners could see. Uh, <laughs> M. Hay has a bandana and some goggles and a, what is that, like a Walgreens red nose? No, this is my fucking uh, beat beat nose, bitch. <laughs> you want to hear my QT about this? QT, it is dog. That this movie is straight up El Pollo Loco. Nice. Yes, my quick take. This movie is the anti-187 mad dope opposite of wet. Mm-hmm. I so, took a photo of Mike, so listeners, if you're at uh, <laughs> bmoviemania.com, you can go uh, click down below and see what Mike looks like tonight. Really going the extra mile. Guys, this for loco is going to give me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's not caffeine in it anymore, but like, it just tastes like sugar. Well, that's uh, because they replaced it with heroin, Mike. Oh, oops. <laughs> well, can we just let's get into some uh, get into some FP2. Um, yes, we discussed the warning up front that uh, the, the film, I think this is the first movie that we've had that has a warning up front that you need a three drink minimum or any drink minimum. To you enjoy. know what? I thought that was absolute horseshit. Why? Because <laughs> you don't need any drinks. You can watch this shit sober and it's fucking great. Yeah, I know. I agree with that. Yeah. So it was awesome. So Jatro, listen, man, I know that was a joke. It's supposed to be funny, but I think it was a, a maybe a little bit of a mask of a little bit of a self uh, deprecation about the cr- piece of art you've made. Fuck mm-hmm. off, man. This movie's fucking great. Don't sell yourself short. No drinks required, but have fun with as many as you want. Get fucking drunk off that quattro. Yep. P-Bro, why don't you talk a little bit about what the world is like these days in the FP2? I'm really confused by this whole thing, to be honest with you. Um, What I was trying to figure out is whether or not the FP, which stands for Fraser Park, it's always confusing as to exactly what the sort of, like, socioeconomic dichotomy is in this place because it kind of sometimes it kind of looks like post-apocalyptic and sometimes there's just like regular cars on the street (laughs) yeah it's a lot more uh vivid in this one that's what it looks like in real fraser park paul you should go visit it it's in california that's where where jatro and Beatro grew up it did look very california i figured it was somewhere in california yeah it's by the sea of wet shit and <laughs> kind of kind of southeast of the bullshit nowhere. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of by Baco, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, the, this this one, it's supposed to be presented much more post-apocalyptic. I That's say. weird to me because there's a shot early on where Jatro is walking down the street and it looks like just yes. a totally normal <laughs> suburb. Love it. There's cars in the background. Just yeah. love it. Love it. And that that's kind of like endearing in a way, because I'm sure this will come up, up, come up at some point. They shoot these movies for next to no money. Yeah. Yeah. Crowdfunding is a big part of all of these movies. And we should just say right now that Jatro is currently shooting part three and four. So Hell to he's the He's found end. a little groove, you know, and a little bit of success with these. And, and I, for one, am happy about that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um did you guys notice in the movie that there's kind of a, a subtle, I didn't notice this till the second time I watched it, kind of a subtle undercurrent of people not liking water and almost like being afraid of it? <laughs> I don't think it's very That's subtle. They're... No? Okay. I think, I think it's the it's the it's all the relation to the ducks, ducks and water. Ducks need water. There. Humans don't. You got to save it for the ducks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because um, KCDC says he's allergic to water. Yo, drink some water. Get that white shit out of my face. God damn it, DC. You gotta drink something out here. I'm allergic to that shit. <laughs> and yeah. nobody ever really wants to get wet. Everyone, like, everyone's kind of afraid to, like, step in puddles and stuff. Yeah, was that really in the first one? I don't recall that, but they are definitely walking out to the waist at some point, and KCDC has this throwaway line where he's like, yo, don't, you know, watch out. You don't want to get that wet shit all over you or something like that. It's just like a puddle, probably. Like, it's just a complete blow away. It's just like this real kind of I, I, I thought it was kind of subtle thing where it was just like people just can't do water. Anymore. Well, and, and the villain even talks about, you know, when the people are trying to maybe starting to grumble about the way he's running things. It's like, you want to be out in that wet shit? Yeah, you're right. That's <laughs> yeah. true. 
And Chris, why don't you uh, talk a little bit about AK-47, our villain? Oh man, AK-47, holy shit. After I green light you, I'm gonna slit every last motherfucking cholo that you ever cared about one by one, clit by clit, six feet deep. Mike O'Gorman, for those of you who want to look him up. Oh man, he's so great. He has got like a kind of little samurai, kind of like haircut sort of thing, the top knotty kind of thing. He's got a blue like hand painted over his face. Yeah. And he kind of goes in and out of, of between English and Spanish. His boots is up to some tippy toe shit, yo. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they're he curly. Is, <laughs> He's got big curly boots. Yeah, and he is the best beat beat revelation bastard there is. He's so good. I love the horns coming off of his back. Yeah. And yo, know, the horns, and most importantly, he's a soul taker. <laughs> yeah. When he beats you, he takes your fucking boots. We get more magic, I feel like, in this one, right? Yeah, there is a little bit of magic too. So he'll steal your soul, and then he steals your souls. Yeah, yeah. I got a, off a, your the, feet. The, the, yeah. His look, uh, his character's look, is a combination between like a samurai, like Chris said, and then there's also, for some reason, a little bit of Braveheart in there. I feel like. And also, um, <laughs> yeah, it's the hand, the blue hand. What's his name from uh, Mad Max? Immortal Joe. Joe. Yes, oh, I yeah. thought that too. Yeah, definitely. He yeah. Uh, he really made the movie for me. He was great. I, and I, I, you know, if J Tro or anybody associated with the movie is listening, I truly don't mean this in a bad way. But to me, the aesthetic of the movie is I would call it garbage punk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, they all... repurpose all this junk yeah. and make it look awesome. I was gonna say the, the the witches that show up, you know, they have their little staves mm -hmm. that are made of like tiki torches and garbage uh, garbage patch kid heads, <laughs> yeah. like spray painted. It's so great. <laughs> I think actually the most Im impressive part of this movie, more so than the original FP, is the production design. There is crap crammed yeah. into every frame of this movie. Yeah, and it all just works, I think. The way it looks, they like created this really weird and ambitious world, and they did it for not a lot of money, but I feel like they were really creative with what they do, had. Do we have any idea how long it took? Because it's been probably like seven years uh, since the original uh, FP came out. No, I think it was nine in between. Wow. I think. I think it was yeah, nine. Yeah, I, I think I remember 2011. I think the first one came out on Yeah, so maybe you're right. Maybe it was like seven. It's it's definitely yeah. more like in the sort of seven to nine year range. So it's, yeah. it was a while. Yeah, well, they filmed it in 2008. It didn't get released until 2011, but they okay. they, they did oh, principal wow. photography in 2008. Hmm. I think one of the cool things about it, like you're talking about like the the set design and the all that stuff, the costume design is, yeah. is Jason's sister, Sarah Trost. And oh, okay. she's actually done a whole yeah. bunch of cool shit. Like she, she does the costuming now for like Righteous Gemstones and HBO yeah. and a bunch of stuff like that. She's done like for, for Fantastic Four, you know, a bunch of stuff she's worked on. So in the movie also, we, we should not uh, skip over Nitro or <laughs> Dadtro, if you want to call him, because we do see early on that J, a young Jtro played by Jtro's real daughter Right, oh. so she's yep. playing her her dad. Um, is sitting on atop Fraser Mountain, and he she, they're they're he's getting a lesson in uh, re ninj and in the rage. Rage, just laying out the mythology for us. Rage and re ninj come from the sky, J Tro, from the gods of the sky and shit. But re ninj is our god, you heard. But you must respect. The path to the true Beat Beat Master comes with its ass a riddle. And you must learn the riddle, Jatro. The riddle of Renage. Which I really appreciated compared to, I don't remember a lot about the first one, probably because I was really drunk. Mm -hmm. But they really expanded. <laughs> I was just going to say. They really expanded so much. Like, like how so much. So much of the mythology in the characters. Mike, maybe, or Jay, maybe you can help me out with this. I tried to go back uh, tonight before we started. Uh, and watch the original FP. I got it through about half of it. But how much of this stuff is actually mythology in the first one? Like Reninj comes up a lot in the second movie. And what was the other thing you said, Chris? Oh, Rage. Rage. Yeah. That's new is in that... this one. Yeah, it's okay. new. It's new. Yeah. Mm. The, well, they get into someone, I think Chai-T, who we'll meet later in the film, 
Uh, she mentions that magic is real out here in the wastes. So I think there's oh. like a, it's more of a mythical area, a mystical area, I guess is maybe the better word. And so, you know, that kind of stuff happens and, you know, it's about following that magic and it, gets super philosophical by the very end of the film. <laughs> they really Dude, embrace it. You guys want to know what I found really magical? <laughs> what? Is that Jatro at the beginning of this movie has given up Beat Beat Revelation and has become a black market like junk dealer selling boppets to teenage girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <To> skip it. <laughs> who was that for? Who oh, was, was that a, girl? Was skip it? She yeah. just had the snottiest voice ever. <laughs> what the fuck is this bullshit? It's a Beat Beat machine. What does it look like? It's broke as fuck. Yeah, you know, sometimes you gotta break something to fix it. Right? It's pretty great. <laughs> it was so amazing. Yeah, and they Loved they it. present Jatro like he's seventy years old. They're always calling him <laughs> grandpa. He's like forty, you know. But uh, yeah, Is and, and I don't old? think the people that were playing the kids were that much younger than him. Maybe, but <laughs> it was funny and it, it worked. Yeah. I noticed some parallels though between sort of his his plot line in this one compared to the first one, like. When I went back and watched it tonight, I didn't realize that like Beatro dies really early on in the first one mm-hmm. and and then he gives up Beat Beat like immediately. So there's there's kind of some parallels between the two. And now where Paul, where did you find the first one? Uh the first one is currently available on Tubi. Woo! Yay. So and also early in this film, we uh we get to see BLT, which was Jatro's friend from the first film. He goes up against AK forty seven like right in the beginning. They have they're they're having a beat beat a beat off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and <laughs> over a bunch of booze. I y'all know the deal. Let's make with the booze. Chop chop. Not so rapido. AK forty seven shows up and he's in a wheelbarrow and he's being pushed <laughs> by a guy named Forklift who only says forklift throughout the movie. <laughs> and then uh, there's someone else behind him with these gold chains mushing him so there's <laughs> forklift is pushing the wheelbarrow that ak-47 is laying in and then there's someone else behind the guy pushing that is mushing him with these chains it is such a weird setup well but, and the thing is dude ak-47 commits to this like weird style of speech so hard oh yeah, yeah. i really think They're in both movies in. J. Tro, I assume, is involved in the casting of this, but L. Double E and A. K. Forty Seven are both great villains. So yes. They are they are on a roll with finding guys that can play really yeah. good villains in their movies. It it sucks a lot because B. L. T. was J. Tro's mentor right. in the first film, right? He's the he's the guy that trains him, gets him into it, all that kind of stuff. So, but B. L. T. is kind of like. Worn down these, not worn down, like he's still badass, but like he's out there scrapping for booze for that mm-hmm. quattro and he's up against AK-47 comes up to beat his ass and BLT just fucking gets floppy twat legs and is down. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. He oh was boy. Back. Floppy twat legs say? already. He was D-U-N done. Yep. <laughs> yep. 187. Yep. So... Of course, KCDC, tell, who's listening to this on the radio, they're they're broadcasting the uh, the beat offs, I guess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so for the listener, the real quick, they don't they do not hold back on beat off jokes throughout the whole <laughs> no, thing. No, they do not. It is I'll beat <laughs> you up. Well, I'm gonna beat you up, and it's like all this stuff while they're like doing yeah. shit, trash talk during the beat offs. <laughs> okay, what's great. that line that you like a lot? Stop trying to beat off. Fucking beat, beat off. off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta go with my favorite one about the uh, here beating offs only for dudes. I thought they only let dudes beat off. Times is changing. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Bitch. Times is changing. Times is changing. <laughs> so, guys, I have a little insight here because when when BLT goes down, you know, gets those floppy twat legs, and he just goes one eight seven. Um, as as mentioned before, AK forty seven like sucks the act. What seems to be the soul. Like this blue aura out of the person he beats, right? He like sucks it out into his hand, yeah, and then and then takes their shoes off, steals those souls as well. But something that's in a deleted scene on the Blu-ray, it, it really gets into what's going on here because those big horns you mentioned that come off his back, yeah, that's a backpack that the the soul stuff is getting sucked into. 
Okay. And they mm. don't and they don't show that really in the movie, but they like he's got this backpack, he's keeping everyone's like soul essence in or whatever the fuck it is. Huh. Or well, rage here, maybe or whatever it's Here's it something that is. kind of uh, confused me a little bit about the whole soul issue because I assume you guys had the subtitles on for this like I did. You really need the what? subtitles oh, on for Paul, this movie. Paul, I can't wait to talk to you about part of the subtitles. <laughs> okay. Well, one of the things that I noticed, and I assumed that that um, Jason or somebody from the movie did the subtitles themselves because... 100%. You know what I'm getting at here. They're all very specific when, when certain things happen. It's like the subtitles themselves are within the FP universe. Yeah. And... Whenever they say soul, like whenever yeah. a character says soul, it's spelled S O L E, which obviously has to do with like the boots as well, which are really important. So like yeah. is it the mm -hmm. actual like human soul or is it more about like some sort of beat beat thing? I don't know. Well, you know, funny thing is when AK47 takes BLT's boots, his or I think this is the part, um his feet are smoking. Yeah. When he takes yep. off the boots. So it's possible that it has something to do with the, like, the sole of the feet. Well, well, what I thought it was is that when AK takes the boots, he's also taking the beat beat power out of his victim and adding it to his own. Kind of so like a Highlander the thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a Highlander. There can only be one beat beat master. I like that. <laughs> I bet I bet installments three and four will get more into it. But my theory kind of was uh, after seeing that deleted scene, they just got this bag full of it. And he also, every time he does it, he smells his hand. Like, that's where the, the blue <laughs> handprint on his face is how he puts it up every time. And so, like, my theory is kind of, because we get into the fact that there's the re -ninja, and that's the god of, like, Jatro. But then there's the Rage, which is uh, assumedly the, another god. And so I kind of think maybe as he's beating these guys, he's taking the, the Rage out of them because they're getting mad as they're fighting and then losing. So he's sucking the Rage out, and then he's keeping it, and then he's able to you know huff it like Dennis Hopper in Blue Velvet because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paps Blue Ribbon or something, right? And maybe that's why it's blue even. <laughs> But, so I just made myself laugh before I could finish my thoughts. <laughs> well, okay, so while Jatro <laughs> hears about his friend's death and he's not on good terms with KCDC, he pulls out his old beat meat machine and he's trying it. And then one of the sorcerer women show up, the Ninjawas, I believe. Yes, that's called. how you pronounce it in this day of age. Yes, this political climate, which we should mention also, <laughs> yeah. speaking of political climate. Um, there's some language in the first film that I'm not going to say because the it's N word pretty racially. Yeah, it's yeah. racially charged. Now, I will say and I, let me tell me if you guys agree. I never, ever got the impression watching the first one that anybody was racist or trying to do anything negative with the language in the first movie. I think no. it's just part of no. what they created. It's not like you're um, watching true romance or anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they did scrub that from this movie. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, it's probably a good move. I yeah, it's, it's, their, it's their sort of attempt to say, look, we understand it's a slightly different time. We're going to tweak things a little bit and, and yeah. don't, please don't get upset at us. Hey, yes. and this thing still works, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Situational yeah. awareness. Isn't that what you'd say in army, Chris? <laughs> that is what we would say in Army J. Yeah, there's definitely. We would say that for Evs. There's one or more like threads on the internet, whether it's in Reddit or on Twitter or something like that, where Jason Trost, there's, there's fans of his that are mad that he got rid of the, the language. And he's, yeah. he's just like, fuck you. If that's what you care about, I don't want you as a fan. Don't watch my movies. Like, there you go. fuck yeah. it. You know, you know they, have a, they have a word for people like that. What's that? Racist. Yeah, racist. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So. Jatro gets this invitation via, I believe, a plush duck? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I, although this is not the duck that came in the night. That's later. <laughs> right. And he gets invited to the Beats of Rage tournament in the Wasteland by the Sea of Wet Shit. I think it's by the Sea of Wet Shit. Hey, well, I mean, he's promised bottomless booze for Revs. Yes. So who could really yeah. turn that down? <laughs> and the thing I love important. is that earlier in the movie, he when he ha he's kind of arguing with KCDC, and he's like, why do I always hear about these important things late? Why did I not know BLT was doing beat beat again and, and all this stuff? And, he's, and, and KCDC says, well, it's hard to find you when you're living in the past or something like that. Yeah, and that is a big thing. Then when when he when Jatro gets this invitation, 
He just goes and picks up a tin can and talks into yeah. it. And KCDC is across the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing. He, he pulls up this giant, like, like gallon can that you'd have, like, tomatoes It's like, it's like in. an old coffee can or something, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then he talks into it, and he's, and he's like, I know you can hear me. You're right out there. And then a the camera cuts to him just in the parking lot in a tent. <laughs> and I think the line between them is, is like, lights or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. the line yeah. in between them lights up. That's kind of cool. It's the simple things. It's really simple that, that make it work, I think. Let's talk about the Beats of Rage tournament, because this is a big part of the movie, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, the Ninjawas. We, we talked a little bit about the Ninjawas, how they look, which I think they look fantastic. They're oh, really cool great. looking. And they're sorceress-type people. And yes. they're they, they, I, they never really establish what kind of building they're in. It just looks like another one of the underground junkie clubs. But you've got all of the the, the tough beaters here. Yeah. Uh, can I mention my favorite one? Yes. And the one that gets I've, probably the most, the one that establishes it. The first one Jade Show goes up against is <laughs> maybe my favorite uh, ancillary character in the entire franchise so far. Uh, it's Quackajax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pronounced or spelled Q-U-A-K-K-A space J-A-X-X. Quackajax. And he's got like a duckbill painted on his face. Like no, no prosthetic duckbill, but just painted with orange on his face. <laughs> and it is, he's just always like quack, quack. <laughs> you know, were, there were I, so many duck puns. I didn't look at the um, the I didn't look at the Kickstarter or anything, but there is so much room to do one of those Kickstarter levels where if you donate something, you get in the movie. They did. I imagine it. that well, did they do that? They did that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. there's so many opportunities. Well, well there, there was a there was a shot of uh, AK like beating everyone, and I swear it's like 20 people going down. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Can amazing. I tell you my favorite one that he beats? Yeah. Bitchbox 360. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bitchbox 360 was good. <laughs> Here's something that I'm a little confused about, though, when it comes to the Beat Beat tournament. Um, when somebody loses, you know, they fall down onto the onto the pad, and there's, like, this electricity <laughs> that shoots out of it. Yeah. And <laughs> so, I don't know. Sometimes it looks like it kills them. And I couldn't quite tell if that was the case. I mean, they're getting, like, electrocuted and have to be, like, dragged off the pad. Yeah, like, sometimes they die, sometimes they don't. Yeah, I think it's just I, I don't kind understand. of a yeah, I didn't survivor get that. hat. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think it probably depends on how important they are to the film. <laughs> and yeah, if they need to die or not. Because <laughs> BLT dies. And B, BLT's a fucking badass motherfucker, Mike. But he yep, goes right. down. He goes well, six feet deep. Well, I think his was an underground beat beat off. And this one is a little more above ground. Oh. You know? is it? Maybe it has. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beat off for the booze. Hey, I, I mean, didn't write this has... down. Do you guys remember who won between Bitch Fist and Paxicle? <laughs> <laughs> Can't say that I, don't I do. Remember. Can, hey, can, can we talk about Dig Dink and Cum Dumpster? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Sloppy Honky and Sloppy uh, honky. Chocolate Fro Yo? <laughs> I love Chocolate Fro. It was Chocolate Fro Yo Yo. <laughs> fro Yo Yo. Yeah, they have this. They do the montage oh, where so everyone's great. dying, and J Tro's winning, and AK's winning, and then we do meet Chai T, who is one of the sorceresses, right? But she doesn't quite look yeah. like that. she dresses. And, she dresses so we can see her face. All the other uh, ninjawas have this like you know elaborate thing. You can't see their faces, but you know Chai T, you can. Can, can we can we back off uh, back up just a little bit? Because I want to say I loved the the part where J Tro first notices AK forty seven. Yeah, his, okay. his question to KCDC was, "Who the fuck is that clown?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, the thing about this man is like it's somehow the language is clever, but it's also the exact most f <laughs> blunt thing you could say. Yeah, it's somehow. It, both of and, but it totally works. Yeah. I they, think it works. That's the thing. Like, the actors all had to commit to this. Yeah. They were like, because you could I mean, say well, it really poorly. And I think that's one thing I love about this movie is it's a pretty funny, silly movie, but it's played completely straight. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, like that, and there is n no point where someone winks at the camera or nodding to like, oh, yeah, we're all in on the joke, too. No, they play it completely straight. I, I don't straight. think it would work if it was tongue in cheek. I oh, don't. No. Oh, totally. No. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's very melodramatic. You get lines like, the tougher they are, the faster I beat off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or 
<laughs> or I PPO's beat off tonight. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I fucking laughed out loud when that happened. That was chai tea, right? You're peeping chai tea right here. I peeped Joe's beat off tonight. There's an extra layer of like funniness when somebody is saying this shit in like an Australian accent or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Paul, why don't you talk to us about Chai T a little bit? What's she all about? We said she's a sorceress, but you know, what's going on with her and uh, hey, J Jay, they, pr- they prefer Ninjawa. That's how you pronounce it in this cultural climate. Sorry, Ninjawa. <laughs> My apologies. If I understand correctly, Chai T is someone who uh, J- Jetro meets uh, at the Wastes as he's out there performing in the BP tournament. And at some point, we kind of find out that she is um, connected to AK-47, um, like either dating him or hanging out with him. But, I mean... Jatro being Jatro, she ends up having a little bit of a thing for him as well. So there's kind of a, um, you know, back and forth struggle here for the affection of, of Chai T. Do I have all that right? Well, I, wasn't it like she was there? Because she said she's not there to win the tournament. She's just there yeah. to make sure the guys are tough enough. So I thought she was just going to go with the winner. Yeah, no, that's what I understood too. Because at some point yeah. she says she's there... To make a strong beat beat baby. Yeah. And so, oh, so and she wasn't she, previously with AK? No, no I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I think I, she just went with AK because he won. Well, and mm-hmm. I think at the end she says something about uh, how she she chose the wrong chosen one or something like that. Well, well, she, well obviously she because she did find out that AK-47 had a weak-ass limp dick. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. See, that's what I so, mean. She found that out. So she obviously got close enough to figure that out. Yeah, well, but AK, I mean, spoiler: AK forty seven wins the beeps of rage beat beat match. So, oh, Oops, yeah, yeah, we're, he we're wins the beat there. off. Well, it's because, dude, it's because J Tro was rage dipping, and he got yeah, he was rage dipping. <laughs> he, he needed, needed to re ninja. He needed to re ninja, and he didn't. <laughs> but I do really like Chai T's <laughs> look. Like she, her, her oh, look, yeah. her, her character's look is really cool. She's got sort of like yeah. again, sort of Japan Japanese like samurai paint makeup, and she's cool. She had one of my favorite lines as well, actually. She did? Chai T did? She did, yeah. I, I don't know why I laughed at it so much, but she's talking to him, to, to Jatro, and at the end of the conversa- conversation, she just goes, Good day, Tro. Good day, Tro. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is, yeah, that's at the end. That's, man, it's so good. I have, yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, I, I, I watched this twice and totally missed that. Damn it's it. subtle. There's so much you can catch the second time. Hey, Jate, sorry. Uh, Producer Alex is flagging me down here. We got to go to commercial. We are now in a partnership with Night Beast Industries, so they send us commercials that we have to roll every once in a while. Oh, yeah. So check this out, and we'll be right back. Roll it, Alex. Oops. Did you spend hundreds of hours on your indie film opus only to realize it isn't sexy? Are your coworkers falling asleep during your presentation? If the answer is yes, visit Night Beast Industries' newest service, eroticstockfootage.com. Eroticstockfootage.com. Eroticstockfootage.com will make your audience shed their clothes and curl their toes. From the bedroom to the boardroom, our premium website offers thousands of hours of erotic stock footage. Steamy general imagery. Featuring Night Beast Industries' top models expressing hot animal desires. Filter your search by age, Ooh, all legal. size, mm, small or big, genders, anything goes, species, kinky, or more. So much more. Simply drop in our ready-made erotic stock footage and turn your ho-hum cinematic snooze fest into a sizzling sexcapade. Blast your coworkers in the face with a presentation that will pop their pleats and pump their petticoats. Mm, not safe for work. Uh. Why compromise? Visit eroticstockfootage.com on the World Wide Web today. Eroticstockfootage.com. Uh. Eroticstockfootage.com. Oh. Eroticstockfootage.com. Yes. Eroticstockfootage.com. A product of Night Beast Industries. 
Well, let's talk about uh, the unfortunate turn of events when KCDC and JTRO have their spat. Oh, man, this is tough. Yeah, he he has to leave. He can't see JTRO go down this path, the path of rage. He's buried too many tros, dog. Mm-hmm. He's put mm-hmm. him six feet deep. Well, I mean, he feels like he has no choice. He's he's doing this to sort of like get JTRO to see the, the error of his ways, basically. Yeah. And we see Jatro start to lose it because he his eyes glow red like AK-47. And we hear the cougar sound. We didn't mention that, did we? He's been rage dipping. Yeah, that's the rage. We, we learn later that's the symbol of someone who's been, you know, dark force, raging. That's not good. Yeah. No, it's not. Re-ninge. And Chris, what is rage dipping? Oh, it's the opposite of re-ninging. I don't know. <laughs> Great description. I mean, I there have no go. other answer either. But it's <laughs> I mean, that's... that's it's, it, it's... I mean, that's like that's like AK-47's power, you know? He's, he, he uses rage to win the beat-offs and everyone else. I mean, every time... I mean, what JTRO needs to do is re ninge He doesn't need to... to, to power himself with the rage. Yeah. And that's why he loses. Hey, and by the way, can I just give... Some mad props to KCDC real quick here. Oh, hell yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> so so in the first movie, um, JTRO leaves the FP after Beatro dies. And Casey comes to get him. And mm-hmm. in this movie, you know, like we just said, he leaves JTRO to prove his point. And then he eventually, you know, like finds him. And, and basically my point is, KCDC is like the glue that is holding this entire thing together when everyone, oh, yeah. everyone else is totally. screwing up and, and ready to quit. He's all about that beat beat and he's all about, you know, making sure that people defend the FP. He's the glue of this entire franchise. Mm-hmm. Definitely. He's like the Samwise of, from, you know, Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. He's the Samwise yeah, mm-hmm. of, of the FP. He's going go to right. he's gonna go to Mordor right there with uh, Frodo. <laughs> yeah. If he, <laughs> <Throw trouble. laughs> nice. It's, it's a, you know, it's the whole thing. If he if he can't beat off, he'll beat you On? off. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that one. So okay, somebody said that uh AK forty seven wins, right? Yes. Yep. AK forty seven Well, you know, two ninjas roll in, one, one ninja, ninja rolls out. out. AK forty seven wins, and then not only does he win, but he takes Jatro's soul. Yeah. The boots. Well, souls. The boots, right? Yeah. The boots. The boot, yeah. Well, then sucks the well, power out. Well, he, ch- he tries to suck the soul, the well, S-O-U-L, but... Mm-hmm. Well, no, I didn't... Well, I no, it kind of uh, goes Jay out of him, and then like, it goes yeah. back into him, and AK's yeah. like, ah, forget it. Yeah, oh. he just took it, and then he, then he just takes the souls. Yeah, and this is the part that it's really confused me, because, correct me if I'm wrong here, up until this point, everyone who is lost has died. And Jatro loses here, but he just seemingly sort of like crawls away and nothing really happens to him. So what am I missing here? Where's the disconnect? Well, I think Jatro is just so strong. Well, yeah. that or there may be some sort of familial bond. Yeah, oh, say, yeah. We'll get there, Chris. You... We'll get there. We'll get is this where you see it, though? No, no. this is no, where it's you getting see... close. No, no. With Bitro. He has. Well, oh, yeah. Bitro. Oh, yeah. Well, the... yeah. This is. Yeah. Oh, is that, is where, does where, that have something to do where, with it? I think this is where Beatro like says to pound him, bro. Pound me, but, dog. Uh, pound, yeah. me pound me now. Pound me, Jatro. Pound me now. Yeah, this is the <laughs> the Star Wars ghost spirit scene where right. he's like, Jatro is in the ghost realm with Beatro and they're talking, and then yeah. Jatro comes back and crawls away. All right, so maybe right the, the Jatro thing had something to do with Beatro's powers, like being fused back in it. I'm willing to look past it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I just, I was genuinely confused when that happened. I'm like, oh shit, he's going to die. And then he didn't. So Jatro walks the wasteland looking like a one-eyed Jesus. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he did. He really um, starts looking like Jesus here. And I, I love where he ends up. The where is place, it, Chris? <laughs> the place he goes <laughs> is so good. <laughs> he, he ends up at the chug hole. The <laughs> chug hole. It is an RV bar <laughs> oh, in the God. middle of nowhere. Yeah, we've all been at the chug hole at some point. <laughs> and if you thought this movie was short on twists, this next part's for you. What's the twist here? I'll take it. Go. Take it. Go be, be bro. P-bro. P-bro, P-bro is my name. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Jaytro goes to the chug hole to get a drink. He's down and out. He's been down and out basically this whole movie. And the bartender's talking to him. He's got this hood on, pours him a drink, whatever. They're chatting. He whips his hood off, and it's Jaytro's dad. And yeah. Jaytro and Jaytro clocks him immediately. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> yes. Fucking Nitro's back, baby. And he talks. They they actually do end up talking, and we get some backstory here, right? And uh, now this this there's a lot that comes out in this part here. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds like Dadro got together with this Ninjawa named chai latte Mm -hmm. and they fell in love yeah and they had they had the kids and when the ninja was found out they had to they forced nitro to go against chai latte in a beat off right chai latte let him win which cost her life but the boys had to be cast out well, they got time to escape, is what I understood. Okay. Because Nitro was able to get two of the boys out, but the third boy, Atro, got left behind. because Wait, was... there's there's a third? There's a third. Yeah. Atro. There's a third Tro? Yeah. The evil Tro. Well, who and could this that is be? New, this is new info to J-Tro. Yeah. Yes. And us. There is a third Tro. <laughs> Atro. There's Atro, there's B-Tro, there's J-Tro. It's revealed here as well who Atro is, right? Yeah, they just yeah. Yeah. say yeah. it. Go. Yeah, just out with it. Atro is AK forty seven. What? I was genuinely shocked. Oh, yeah. Same. Yeah, same. didn't expect that. Well, you know, I mean, AK forty seven called him Hermanos earlier, so. Uh, uh, well, he does yeah, speak in a, a lot of Spanish, though. Yeah, that's yeah. a second watch sort of situation. I think it's a little foreshadowing, though. But guys, this is where we get a montage, a training montage. Oh, now. the montage. Well, Ooh. yes, and the thing that kicks off this montage is so amazing because J Tro's like whatever. I don't even have my boots. I I can't do anything against A Tro, who's evil. But Ed, he's he's wearing like milk jugs as <laughs> as sandals. <Yeah. laughs> and so they go to the back of the chug hole, and Nitro pulls <laughs> this tent <laughs> flap aside. <laughs> And there's Chai Latte's skeleton sitting there. His mother's skeleton sitting in a chair <laughs> oh, yeah. with these white fuzzy beat beat boots. And they beat beat were boots. always the strongest boots. My boots was not the only pair, yo. Nor was they the strongest, Jatro. Your mother's was. It cuts to Jatro's feet, and it's one of the funniest parts of the movie. He's just wearing, like paper on his feet or something <laughs> no how, how is he not able to find any other boots in like it's, nine months it's smashed <laughs> fucking like half gallon jugs for milk yeah. they are <laughs> smashed and they're like plastic wrapped around them it is amazing <laughs> it's so great oh yes and then we get this awesome montage of him getting back on that horse they are really good at montages do you know how awesome the montage is uh, it, well, the montage has possibly the best line in cinematic history. Oh, you're talking about the, the <laughs> captions describing the montage? I'm not, but if I can say my line, then tell me about the captions. All right, fair. The line is... Stop trying to beat off. Fucking beat, beat off! off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a very good line, but imagine that under what the subtitles describe as squealing mo- guitar montage... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. D- they definitely did these subtitles because it just like everything is like uh, every time there's Middle Eastern music playing, it's either like ominous Middle Eastern music or mysterious <laughs> Middle Eastern music. But Paul, I'm sure you also noticed that later in this montage, squealing guitar montage changes us to dope montage song. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, that's awesome. Well, well, while all this stuff is going on with Jatro and his dad, we kind of cut back to AK-47, who now owns the FP. Yeah, yeah. he does. And uh. he gives a whole he gives a whole rousing speech about how he owns the FP, and it's all his now, blah, 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 blah. And KCDC is there, kind of hooded, kind of yelling out like, you know, <laughs> Jatro this, Jatro, you suck, dog. And all this shit. And then... <laughs> 
there's this guy, kind of very vaguely transsexual, I guess, who looks a lot like Stacy's mom from the first FP, mm. played by Sean Whalen, telling Casey DC to shut the fuck up. Which brings me to yep, here we another go. Whalen fact. Whalen facts. So, Sean Whalen was featured in the first season of B-Movie Mania pick, Tammy and the T-Rex. Now, Sean originally what? filmed... Yeah, oh yeah, he was in that. He was in Tammy and the T-Rex. There's a party goer named Weasel who watched one of his best friends die from the T-Rex. Whalen facts. All right, so what is Chai Latte up to next? Uh, being preggers. Well, yeah, <laughs> she's preggers. Because uh, she uh, she's got J Tro's baby. Because uh, AK's what? What again? He's oh, he's shooting blanks. She is challenging AK forty seven to buy J Tro some time. Can we also talk about how how Casey is Casey DC is trying to start a resistance against uh, AK forty seven? Yeah, he's there's starting like, the resistance. Yeah, there's like three guys in the fucking resistance, and they all wander off. Yeah, they're not really into it. No, no. But then Chai T does challenge AK-47 to a beat-off to distract him long enough for Jatro to show up? Yep, because yes. AK-47 isn't expecting the unexpected. Jatro's not expecting the unexpected, Jatro. That's true. <laughs> that's right, that's true. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he shows up, and I mean, more or less just straight-up challenges in Jatro! <laughs> they don't even awesome. finish with Chai Latte. <laughs> or they don't chai tea rather they don't finish chai tea's beat off <laughs> no but but jaytro shows up and he just like jumps up on the pile of garbage and just yells <laughs> atro in a wonderful way and then it's so great and then they start beating off together <laughs> when atro's going off on him he says how about you shut the fuck up and dance bitch they start their beat off right yep and paul how's this go this is big. This is big. Um, you know, obviously, AK-47 slash Atro is a formidable opponent. And so, uh, <laughs> Jatro, you know, he's still a little bit on the rusty side. He hadn't, hadn't been beaten off in a while. He is a little bit rusty here and is losing pretty, pretty bad. Um, so, things are looking grim. Um... And then doesn't he does he uh, commune again with uh, Beatro? Well, Paul, he's be, he's beginning to reninge, but he must reninge alone. <laughs> yes, we've heard about this the entire movie about reninging, and and finally it starts ha happening, and we see Jatro like <laughs> go full Palpatine on everybody with like all this lightning <laughs> like shooting out of him for some, or maybe shooting into him. I'm not sure. I thought it was into him. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that would make it's more like, sense. It's like the beat, beat electricity, like flowing through him. And he has re -ninged. Yeah. Well, he also has his mama's boots. Yes. The, right. Yeah. He's got his mama's, his mama's boots. So he's got everything working in his favor now. And he beats Atro. Yeah. And my favorite oh, thing yes. is when he hits the big <laughs> stomp at the end. There's a shot where it's pointed up at Jatro, <laughs> and he hits that stomp, and solo cups go flying all over yes. in the air behind him. <laughs> I did. I didn't notice. That. It's just these little details that are so funny if, that they do. If you <laughs> had donated to a certain level in the Kickstarter, you would have been part of the silver screen muggers, as they were called, and uh, been part of the movie in the background of that scene, and gotten to throw those solo cups up. So. Next time oh, Trost wow. has got a nice. fucking uh, Kickstarter, fucking donate, man. Hey, FP5. Yeah, shit, you guys. I mean, if they're doing this in California, I need to get into one of these things. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look into it. So after the dance, mm -hmm. AK does not die. No, he doesn't. Either. Right. No. He, in fact, in fact starts snorting some souls. Yep. They start like uh Atro and Jatro start physically fighting. I mean, yeah. up up until this point, like most of the disagreements and everything or most of the uh tension has been resolved via beat beat. But now like just it's everything has spilled over and it's like a, a slugfest. 
Like, they are finally finished beating off. There's no more beating <laughs> yes. off. Now yeah. they're fisting each other. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, Atro loses at first, takes some of the dust, starts beating up everybody in sight. Yeah. And that's when Beatro comes back. Beatro comes back and kind of inspires Jatro again. Yeah. But, but not before Atro is allowed to say my second favorite line of the film. <laughs> Which is open wide cactus cooler. <laughs> Call that a one eight seven. Open wide cactus cooler. Uh, yeah, what was that? Which right? is my my favorite soda. That's my favorite soda. <laughs> so, Why does he call him Cactus Cooler? <laughs> I don't know. Because they like though. It's, it's California. That's where you can get that soda. So they probably okay. said it. Oh yeah. It's so good. true. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say though, I really re- real quick one little detail I noticed is when uh, like AK is winning the fist fight for a little while, and then he you know he knocks down Jatro. Then he starts punching the crowd. Yeah, and like one of the guys he punches was just going for a high five. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. I didn't either. Yeah, it's so That's great. great. <laughs> Oh my Probably God. some pretty good re- rewatch value on both FP movies. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. When, once Jatro actually wins, after the vision of Beatro, Atro, they, he doesn't die, but they wait, haul him off to beat prison, wait, right? You can't skip the drop kick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> the drop kick. Yeah, that's my talk about the drop right. kick. Mention the <laughs> fact that fucking to oh. his his finish him move. You know, KC's just like finish him, and Jatro jumps in the air and 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 like in a Sam Raimi comedy, his let camera behind the feet just flies <laughs> through the air and into the chest of Atro, and yes. it is. Fucking amazing! <laughs> oh, and it's, oh, it's everything so is slow motion, and even yeah. the the triumphant music that's jamming slows down for that shot. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so comical. It's like he's so obviously long. in the air longer, and it doesn't visually quite make sense, but it's fucking funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, this is another bookend right here. Atro lands in a wheelbarrow. Yes, yep. he does, baby. Yeah. And I believe when he, with the shot that it is, it is a definitely a dummy that falls onto the wheelbarrow. <laughs> 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 and it's uh, so good. It's so ragdolled. It's really oh funny. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. And, and Jatro takes back the FP. Yeah. He does. And, yep. and I, you know, I'm going to tell you, I would not mind. I don't know how what they got planned for, for three and four, but if Atro comes back, I would not mind. Oh yeah, Atro. Oh. I don't think that story is. Well, he's over. Not, yeah, he's not done. He's going. He's going to the Baco, and I have, uh, I believe, what I've read on like Jason Trost's descriptions of stuff is that Baco, which I believe is short for Bakersfield, um, is uh, part of something in the future, three or four. I don't know, but nice. I believe he's mentioned Ooh. it more than just this. Um, oh, nice. they set it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there is also a throwaway moment that I just want to mention that KCDC once. <laughs> Once, once they drop kick, once J. Cho drops kicks AK forty seven, KCDC goes flawless victory, and someone in the crowd, and the subtitle says crowd member, and they go, uh, I guess because because yeah. J. Cho got his ass kicked before, it was not a flawless victory, it was fucking brilliant because that's nice. what was going on in my head, and then someone in the crowd in the movie says what I was thinking, and it was fucking brilliant. That's great. <laughs> So pretty much everything ends on a happy note. Yeah. Jatro gets together with Chai T. They're going to have a Sheila, right? Well, yeah. who's they, who they named uh, Chai Tro. Chai Tro, as you, see, yeah. as you see in the after credits scene. Hang around for after the credits. That's yeah. right. Um, mm-hmm. We we have Nitro, who's they they, they roll together. They live together. They that's live right. together. That changes. We didn't really mention that in the. It's that's from the first movie. With with Beatro and Jatro, they have a, sl- a term where they say uh, or a phrase, you know, we roll together, we die together. That's the thing that you do in the FP. Mm-hmm. And now they change it. You roll together, you live together. Yep. So dad's back. And... I hope they literally live together in like the same house in three. <laughs> yeah. Like, <they're... laughs> would you be surprised at all? No, no they probably will be. <laughs> And he says, I've got a feeling our adventures have only just begun. i got a feeling our adventures have only just begun. Hell yeah. Like that Back to the Future to be continued. And then everyone gets wasted off the Quattro. That's right, baby. And then credits roll. 
and the subtitles then read dope end movie music <laughs> yep. so i really gotta go well, back and watch it with the subtitles oh my god yeah. it's yeah very oh good. my god yeah i don't know how you yeah. did this movie without the subtitles to be honest with you there's so i mean the it? lingo is so thick yeah it was all right well, I got to say one thing I loved about the end credits is that we see that Sean Whalen was in this movie. Oh, yeah? Which, <laughs> oh. which brings me to a final Whalen fact. Whalen facts. Sean was cast by Rob McElhenney to play the role of McPoyle in the episode McPoyle vs. Ponderosa, The Trial of the Century, for It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Now, this episode is especially notable for featuring Guillermo del Toro, who just really can't get over his disappointment in his son. Wayland facts. Woo! Let's talk about that <laughs> post credit sequence. We've got a kid. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same daughter, right? Chitro. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. father, like daughter, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I, I suppose. Now, and is it, I think it's a bookend of... I think Jatro is saying the same thing to his daughter that his dad said to him on the top of Fraser Mountain. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. So he's explaining the rage and the re ninja. Yeah, he it, like more in more in depth, right? Like he's saying like yeah. the re ninja is our he literally says the re ninja is our god. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so yeah. like that he puts it in that defined context. It's very which spiritual. Which is very terms. interesting to me. That this is gonna become more than just like a frame of a state of mind. But a an actual god, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, this could be really cool because I mean, if if they take um, a page out of Richard Linklater's playbook for the Before trilogy, and they do these movies every nine years, <laughs> then like uh, Jatro might be too old to 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 beat off Paul. Paul, if, <laughs> as. As the elder statesman of the B-Movie Maniacs, I am going to say you are never too old to beat off. Rating time, bitches. My plan here is to follow what I think the movie would want me to do yeah, and go okay. with the most obvious. We're going to rate <laughs> this 1 to 100 beat-offs. Mike? Well, guys, I, there was a question I wanted to... I mean, you snuck in this uh, ratings thing. I mean... Appropriately time, Jay, please. All respect to you. Uh, but there was a question I kind of wanted to pose to you guys. Um, do you think you could watch this movie and and follow along well enough without having seen the first? No. Yeah, uh, do you want I, a real I answer think... to that? Because I watched this with my neighbor and by the end of it, she looked like blood was going to shoot out of her nose. That's what I wanted to know. That's what I, because I feel like you need the context. Like, I feel like it does a good you, job you of world building, but I, I think it's such an insane land of college profits level yeah. Yeah. of world building. You kind of need to see the, the first one. Well, I was about to yeah. disagree with Paul because I don't remember the first one very much at all. But I guess I already kind of knew the context of it, so I, I remember that much. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Well, well, either way, um, <laughs> this movie's so fucking good. <laughs> Jason Trost is fucking re ninjas, man. Like he's got it. He's got this world in his head. It's like that land of college prophet shit, right? <clears throat> like he's got all the the mythos in it, and it's so full of mythos, and and it doesn't dumb it down for you it doesn't say let let me ease into this and help help a viewer who may not, maybe doesn't understand what's going on it just says hey welcome to the world here here it is you're you're dropped in and you have to witness this world and uh <laughs> it's fucking great <laughs> um so you know i i have nothing but good things to say about it i can't even it's fucking great. Uh, so I'm going to give it double AKs. So I'm going to give it a double AK 47s. What's what? 94. Nice. Wow. Very good. Right. Very good. All right. Paul, you want to rate this in your own way, right? So uh, what do you got? Uh, Mike's absolutely right. They not only do, do they have the mythos down, obviously, but they build on the mythos in this movie. I mean, they keep expanding the world of the F FP, which is always a good thing. And I am a sucker for 
people, independent filmmakers putting their heart and soul into something and and it shows in every frame of this movie, you know, like I mentioned before with the production design and and like you guys said, you know, about the actors committing to everything. It's it's a joy to watch uh, filmmakers put something like this together and make it super fun to watch. Uh, I am going to diverge a little bit from the beat off situation and <laughs> I am going to go. Uh, ladies, I'm so sorry, but it's 84 <laughs> floppy twat legs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. That's good. Chris, are you going to bring us back to a beat off here? Uh, yeah, we'll see where I end up at the end of this uh, review here. Um, I think, uh, I thought I was going to come in here and be the lowest, lowest score on this. Um, cause I mean, a movie like this, I agree with Paul. I agree with Mike. I really see the appeal of this sort of movie. Um, but I really wanted to like this one more. Um, it, it's got a similar aesthetic to something like, you know, Turbo Kid and Manborg, which we did last season or mm -hmm. two seasons ago or whenever. Um, but I didn't, it, I don't know, it was missing something that really put it on to that next level of like of those movies for me. Um, I mean, there's a lot to like in this movie. AK-47 was great. The beat-off tournament, the, the soundtrack. We didn't really talk about the music. We never talked about the music, but the music was fantastic. I mm -hmm. loved it. It was dope. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a fucking killer soundtrack, yo. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to this movie going into it, but I got to rate it lower than I thought. So, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of go with Paul and rate it 84 floppy twat legs. <laughs> That's, <all right. laughs> That's <Okay>. a terrible <laughs> review. What about you, Jay? <clears throat> okay. So. Oh, no, no, no. I know it's not a terrible review. It's great. I love the movie, but not as much as I thought. It's an epic movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's got good characters, an interesting plot, and like I said, the actors really had to go for this, the the, the language style, and they just nailed it. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen low-budget constraints used better in any totally. movie. Totally. Yeah. Because even movies like Turbo Kid and stuff like that, they've got more money than Jason Trost has for these movies. Mm -hmm. So... That's why I called it sort of garbage punk, is that they use the the whatever they have in hand, plastic bottles strung up everywhere, <laughs> um, tiki torches, heads of dolls, and, you know, they just m combine all of this, and somehow it all works in this, like, uniform way. So I would watch FP2 with anybody right now. I suggest it to anybody who likes B-movies. And I definitely want to see three and four. I, I definitely yeah. want to see what Jason Trost has up his sleeves. And I also really enjoy the fact that he is in control of all of this. This is his thing. He does it his way. And that's the way he wants to keep it. And I like that. So I am going to give this 95 beat offs. Hell nice. yeah. Yeah. Love this movie. Jay, you mentioned you know, that he does everything his way and all that kind of stuff. I would like to point out, A, we didn't mention that you can get this on Amazon right now. Currently, FP2 is streaming on Amazon. Yep. Uh, the first one's on Tubi. You, so you can get them there, but also on Amazon, one of the perks for the Kickstarter for just to raise money for three and four, uh, JTRO re-released FP2 Blu-ray. And if you put a certain amount of money in, you got certain things, blah, 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 blah. Um, one of the fucking things he did was made a duck fit workout video. Yes, dude, oh, I yeah, watched yeah. those. Yeah. Ducks are a big yeah. thing in the first movie. They don't really mention them in the second much, but in the first movie, it's yeah, a big a fucking thing. There are a lot of duck references. And Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's like <laughs> a fucking like real big point in the first movie. Yeah. And so like, he's got this duck fit thing and it is just a straight fucking workout video that Jason Trost put you through. And it is on Amazon Prime. If yeah, you, it's a four-parter, and each one is like mm -hmm. 15 minutes. Yeah. They're short. I, I kind of just had to look at it to see what it was, and it just works on one part of your body at a time, and he actually gives you decent length breaks in between the exercises <laughs> from what it looks like. <laughs> and, so nice. you and can I'll get ripped like Jatro. Yeah, and if you haven't watched this yet, Jatro is fucking ripped. He's a good, he's pretty he's ripped. good, good looking boy. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys... I thank you for going through the FP with me, and hopefully you didn't get any wet shit all over you. 
<laughs> only only the drool from my mouth from watching J Tro <laughs> during those montages. I got bottomless booze for Evs. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode of B Movie Mania. Hey Chris. Hey Chris. Real yeah, quick. What's, what's that, Paul? I, I picked uh, Turbulence 3, Jay picked FP2. You got to pick a, a, a part one of something. That's a good point. <laughs> That's true. All right. Fair enough. I will pick a part one. And not only a part one, but I'm going to do a B-movie mania first. I am picking an Oscar award winning movie. What? Whoa. Hold this on. is amazing. Hold on. I know. This is going to be amazing. Is so, that legal? Alex? No. No. Alex? Perfectly legal. Alex? Stop him, Alex. Alex? Alex producer Alex, is that legal? I am. Okay, so as we record this, the okay. Oscars just happened, right? And so I am picking the winner. I don't I mean, I honestly don't know why they let a, 19, a movie from 1982 uh, compete in the okay. awards this uh, year. But I am picking Oscar award winning, <laughs> movie, the best picture, Parasite. It's a Charles Band oh. movie from 1982. I this don't know. Good, actually, Chris. I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Producer Alex. I have no, 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 no idea. Chris, hold on. Chris, you cannot yeah. pick. This is B Movie Mania. You cannot pick the movie that just won Best Picture no, I, at the I'm 2020 picking, Oscars. I'm, I'm picking. I'm picking Parasites. And like I said, I don't know why they let a movie from 1982 win the 2020. Uh, Best Picture Award uh, at the Academy Awards. And fine, I mean, Charles Band, I mean, you can't go wrong with him. Also, it's Demi Moore's first movie. Huh. Well, Demi Moore? Yeah. So, uh, oh, well, yeah, like so uh, it's, avail yeah. it's available on, Am on Amazon Prime. And uh, I am just really excited to talk about what makes this movie so good it would win a fucking Academy Award for Best Picture like 40 years <laughs> later. Is, Paul, Paul. Wow. I don't understand I, it. I don't so know if you saw this, Paul, this we're doing. we were asking producer Alex, like, what the fuck? You saw his face of just like, just let yeah. it go. Just let it go. He's waving <laughs> us on. Just let him do it. You know, oh, that's what. That, Chris talked happened. to Alex yeah, before the makes show. Sense. That makes sense. Chris, great pick. I don't know what the fuck it is, but I'm excited. <laughs> hey, if Demi Moore's in it, oh, I'm same. on board. It's her first movie. It's great. And it's Charles Band. You can't go wrong with the band. Yeah. Hey, I'll beat off to it. <laughs> uh, we don't have to beat off anymore, Mike. <laughs> oh, no? Oh. Mike, no, don't unzip your pants. No, what are you Mike, doing? Mike, what are you doing? No, oh, this is a God, totally no, different no, thing. No, 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 no. no, no. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Mike left, but we have to talk about if you liked uh, this episode of B Movie Mania, we would really appreciate it if uh, you showed us a little bit of love by rating us or leaving a review on iTunes. Five stars is preferable. Whatever you got to do, we'll take it. I left. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Buy a fucking t-shirt. Yeah, we got those new Slade Craven t-shirts out, and you know you want to pick one up. Shh, you're not... Shh. You left. <laughs>